So this is the Guts, the Composite, that's in the 050 and the 200 combi range. The only thing that's different in the 050, there's no bypass. So let's talk about this. Here you've got the plate to plate. So if your hot water is fluctuating hot and cold, it's more than likely the plate to plate. On the 200 range, there's a drain valve at the bottom right. On the 050, you have to pull the pressure gauge cable out. Um, so to get this plate to plate out, there is a torque screwdriver required on the left. On the 200 range, there's a thermistor there. I'll just clip off. Slide this out. Here you are. So there's the two, there's the two different metals look, so they expand at different rates. Put some vinegar in or descaler in, boil the kettle, put boiling water in, give it a knock around, give it a knock around, and then blast cold water through it for five minutes. And then the hot and cold water will cause a shock in the, in the two different metals because the metals expand at different rates. On the 200 and the 050, you've got a pressure gauge. So if you want to check if the pump's working, two methods. The pressure gauge will go up zero two bar if the if the ball is working, the pump's working, sorry. The other way to check the pump is working, put a screwdriver in the anti-seize screw. So the next thing we have on the 050 and the 200 range is a built-in shock arrester. One clip comes out. So if you're finding that the hot water tap is spitting at you, drain the boiler down, the cold water down, and refill it. And when you refill it, what it's doing is it's recharging the shock arrester. So this shock arrester is designed to absorb water hammer and pressure for the water to escape should the, should, should, should the pressure build up in the system. This is actually a very good device, it saves you fitting one externally, and this is to protect the, pl the plastics. Remember, if the hot water tap spits, drain down and refill. Just here we have an NTC, so again, drain the system down. Should an NTC fail, just take it out, clean it, and check the resistance. We'll do the, the multimeter bit later on. Should you wish to do a resistance check, remove the harness, uh, and go straight onto the thermistor. Sometimes if you clean them out, it might fix them. This one's brass, they have superseded them to stainless steel now, so a lot, a lot better. Here we have, here we have the aqua sensor. So if you've got no hot water at all, and the ball is not doing anything, the first thing you have to do when the ball is not functioning is check the demand. Check the controls, turn the hot water tap on. If you still not get anything, it's the demand. It could be this, this, spins when there's a hot water demand. It's a very popular aqua sensor this. I'll draw later on how this works. So take that out. And inside we have something called a Hall's effect sensor. And I'll draw you a nice diagram how the Hall's effect sensor works. Now with Hall's effect sensors, how they work is they get five volts supplying them. Oh, this one's being quite challenging. How aqua sensors work, they get five volts supplying them and roughly half the voltage on a return exit. There you go, all's effect sensor. So basically, there's a magnet in this and when that magnet spins, it conducts the electric across from one terminal to the other using magnetism. So, 5 volts supplying it and about 2.3, 2.4 returning back. Here we have the PRV, pressure release valve. So if you're not quite sure if the PRV or the condensation is dripping, take the hose off and just put your finger inside. Just here we have the diverter valve. So on the 200 range and the 050, the best method to take this out is to just pull it out. If you need to take the diverter valve body out, probably be best if you were to remove the pressure vessel cable here. Just pull it out, 
put some grease on, put it back in. So, diverter valve. So if you want to check how this is working, simple method. Put it in purge and you'll move to the mid position. Whenever you're dry, dry draining down a boiler appliance, always put it in purge. Because what a purge sequence does, a venting sequence does, it puts it in mid position. So another quick method to check this is to actually turn the power supply on. So whip it out, put the power supply on and off, and you'll see it move to the three positions. And that's doing a little safety check. We'll talk about how to do a resistance check on that later on. So here we have the divert of our body. So the divert of our body on this appliance is actually quite good. It's actually a paddle type. So on the 050, you will struggle to get this, but on the, 100, on the 200 range, you can slightly undo the panel, side panel, and that will give you a small clearance. So again, the diverter valve is playing up. One of your best methods to do is to pull this off and turn it yourself. If that's working, you know you're overhauling the problem. If you're getting to a situation where you're putting hot water tap on the heating's coming on, it's probably this valve here. So I've done that. Let's pull this out. And there you have the paddle valve, for the diverter valve. So, heating comes on, not a problem. Hot water comes on, that rad's get hot in the summertime. This could be it, it could be passing. And you simply just fit a new, fit a new washer. 